I'm going to make it short because of the obvious. What makes people get soaked on a Friday afternoon to come to Salat al-Jum'ah and especially those that are on the outside, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them and those that walked in and got their clothes soaked, what makes you take off of your work if you had work, sacrifice an hour of earning to come to this masjid except for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want us to just seize this point on the idea of sacrifice and how that plays into our Ramadan goals and how that plays into our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about in terms of giving up our food and drink for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises and says, look at my servants, they gave up their food and their drink. Especially when it's a hot summer day and when you're in those last moments of your iftar and your Lord, or right before iftar, and your Lord is looking at you at 7.45 p.m. when you're dehydrated and tired and hot and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you in that moment making dua to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him for His goodness even while the food is right around the corner from you, you're just thinking about Allah's forgiveness and you are exerting yourself in dua. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at you on the day of Arafah? I know it's not Hajj time yet, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write it down for us. Allahumma ameen. The day of Arafah, when the people are gathered, dusty, tired, sleep schedule off with their hands raised for hours and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasting to the angels saying, look at these people. What is it that these people want from me? Look at them, my servants, coming out in this open plain. Bear witness, O oh my angels, I have forgiven all of them. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see the servant that wakes up at night? Fighting with their bed. Literally, tatajafa junubuhum anil madajir. Your sides, you're flipping from side to side. Is it really time now? Do I have to really wake up now? Should I just sleep through this one? Or should I wake up and should I pray a couple of rak'ah? Should I pray my salat al-witr? You know what, let me wake up and pray. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at you when you're standing up and making wudu and doing that even though you are absolutely exhausted? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then look at you when you give up sins that are so beloved to your heart, that you are so addicted to. I will never forget, I will never forget the shahada of a man who I thought to myself and I hope that my dhan in him, my assumption of him was correct, Allah must love this person. The shahada of a man who told me, he said, Shaykh, I'm not giving up family to become Muslim. I've already lost my family years ago. He said, but my only friend has been the bottle twice a day, alcohol, khamr. And he said, I'm going to give this up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to give it up for Allah and I'm going to prove to Allah that I love him because Allah knows that the most beloved people in the world to me could not get me away from this bottle. And now, mashallah, he's eight years sober. And I think to myself, subhanAllah, this is the stories of those sahaba that had to give up these things. When Allah looks at someone that made really, really, really hard sacrifices for him. And I quote to you this hadith where the Prophet wasallam said, Allah is amazed by this person. Allah admires this person. A person who on a cold night, the scene is set. It's a cold night and you don't have heaters and we remember the winter storm. A cold night gets up in the middle of the night from a comfortable bed, leaves their lover, leaves their spouse, leaves their comfortable bed on a cold night and goes and freezes themselves making wudu and stands up and calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the angels. This is not just for everyone standing in Arafah. This is for the individual and says about that individual to all of these angels. Imagine all of them looking in at you at this one bedroom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says انظروا إلى عبدي Look at this servant of mine. Look at this servant of mine. He left all of that, a comfortable night, a comfortable bed, the person he loves most, to a place of extreme discomfort, putting cold water on himself on a cold night. 
all of that out of fear of what is with me and out of hope for what is with me. Out of fear and hope. يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا They call upon Allah out of fear and hope. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, مَا حَمَلَ عَبْدِي عَلَى هَذَا What do you think caused my servant to do that? And they say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, رَبَّنَا رَجَاءَ مَا عِنْدَكَ O oh Allah, out of hope is with what is with you. فَيَقُولْ فَإِنِّي قَدْ أَعْطَيْتُهُ مَا رَجَى وَآمَنْتُهُ مَمَّا خَاءَ says that I have given them what they sought. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our sacrifice and to protect us in this life and the next. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best of this life and the next. Wa aqim as-salah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.